Hi, this video is to help you build your rocket successfully the first time. Is once the glue has set and dried, it is very difficult to pull it off and try it again without damaging the rocket. Please make sure to watch this video in its entirety, as well as reading the instructions that come along with your rocket kit so that you have a successful first build. The first thing you want to do is check your contents of your package. Make sure all the parts are in there and then read the supply list and pull all of your supplies together and set them on your table. So when it's time to use them, you're not scrambling trying to find things. The first step for the green egg rocket build is to sand the edges of your fins. Once you punch your fins out, um, tape your sanding paper to your sanding block and begin to round out the edges and smooth them over. So you're prepping your pieces. This part of the video is step one of the mark the body two. What you're doing is finding the line for the launch lug later in the build. To help you draw a straight line, you're going to mark a line in the center of two of the fin slots, either any two slots will do, and then using the door stop as your guide, run the pencil down the tube to midway the tube so that you know where to place the lunch log later in your build. Here we are punching out the centering rings. You'll need to be extremely careful with the X-Acto knife. It's a sharp point. If you've not used an X-Acto knife before, um, please talk with your parents or a responsible adult to ask for assistance or that they monitor you while you're using it to make sure that you stay safe. Here we are measuring the motor mount to trying to decide where the incision needs to be made to put the engine hook in. Here we've marked it off and making the incision to insert the engine hook, which is a little silver metal piece that's going to keep the rocket um, engine from bouncing back out during its injection ejection charge. And here you glue it on. If you notice my gluing, I've added more glue than needed. My philosophy is add more glue and wipe it off rather than not have enough glue and it fall apart during flight. That would just be disastrous. So slightly below the line that I marked where the piece, this is the black uh, engine hook retainer. So just below the line that I marked where that's supposed to slide, I added the glue so that when I slide the retainer ring up to the line, it will carry the glue with it. And that way the glue gets in um, the entirety of the tube. So now that I've gotten it uh, to the line, We'll have to wipe off the excess glue. Paper towel fingers will do just as well. Now I'm adding glue to the inside of the motor mount tube so that when we put the little green engine block in place, that's going to fit snugly in there. The glue is going to tighten it so that the thrust and ejection uh, charge will not propel the motor up into the rocket. It will stop it. Now I'm adding glue for the centering rings. Again, the same concept. Add uh, enough glue to make sure it's going to work and wipe off the excess. And for 
or the centering ring, if it looks like I'm struggling to get it on, it's because I'm struggling to get it on. It's a very snug fit and it needs to be because it's going to hold the motor mount into the center of the tube. It's what's called centering ring. And that's going to keep the motor mount from moving around as the rocket um, is launching and flying. But you do need to be very careful and try to apply even pressure around the entire ring, not too much on one side or the other, because you don't want it to break. You do not have extra ones of these in your kit. So you slide it up to the pencil mark and make sure that the ring is level all the way around. And then you're going to use your finger to do what's called a fillet. And that's just uh, smoothing out the glue so that it's snug and it fits right up to the tube. And we'll do the gluing and putting the centering ring on for the top of the mount as well. Same process. Again, it's a snug fit, so you're going to need to work slowly and carefully to make sure you do not break the ring. It looks like a little rocking motion kind of helps get that on there a little easier. Again, when you get it to a line, you're going to do the same with the glue to do the fillet around the edges with your fingers. I'm going to let that set to the side and dry. Now I'm applying glue uh, to the inner part of the body tube. It's slightly below the line where the first centering ring needs to go so that when I slide it in it's going to carry the glue with it and make that a snug fit. Now I'm dry fitting the fin just to make sure that the fin is going to fit uh, where it needs to fit. Make sure my centering rings are out of the way because I just push those up into the tube. So before that glue dries I want to make sure it's in the right place so that when it's time to put the fins on we can do that. If you notice, I am making a mess of my glue, way too much glue. You only need it on the edge, but somehow or another, I've managed to get it down on the side. So we're just gonna remove that before I put it in. And we'll insert the thin insert tab into the slot of the body tube, making sure that the edge of the fin is flush to the tube no spaces, no gaps. I'm just going to hold that in there for a couple seconds to let it to let it sit for a minute. Set. Now that I've done that for all three, there's a guide on your directions that you can put the body tube and the fins down on to make sure the fins are straight. So you will want to match your tubes. Same thing. Now I'm measuring where I need to put the mark for my launch lug and I'm using that line that I drew from the dorsa. Now we're cutting out the shock cord anchor and that's going to attach the rubber shock cord that's in the kit to the rocket to make sure the rocket stays together during the recovery phase after the injection charge shoots out the parachute. This anchor is going to put one part of the shock cord onto the tube and the other end of the shock cord goes onto the nose cone and payload section. You want to add enough glue to make sure it's going to stay and also, when you put it inside the body tube, you want to do it uh, while the glue is wet so that it has an opportunity to form 
to the curve of the tube. So I'm measuring how far up into the tube I need to put it. So when I measure, I'm holding my thumb on the outside and I'm going to kind of eye gaze to see how far up into the tube the anchor needs to be placed. So I'm going to put it where my thumb is on the outside. That's how far into the tube I've placed it. I'm just going to hold it for a couple seconds to make sure the glue gets to set in the, the curve. This step, you need to be extremely careful. You're separating the nose cone from the transition piece for the halo bed. And again, it's a hard plastic and a very sharp knife and slipping could be very dangerous. Make sure you have a responsible adult monitoring or assisting you with cutting this piece. Okay, what I'm doing now is using my sandpaper to smooth out the edges. When I cut it, there were a couple of rough spots or jagged edges on my plastic. So just by lightly rubbing in a circular motion on the sandpaper will help smooth out some of the jagged pieces. We want to make sure we have a smooth surface for flying. Now I'm using tape to do a uh, tape fitting for the joint so that it doesn't easily come apart, but it easily comes apart. You don't want it to go apart too easily. And the tape just gives it a little snug fit. Now I'm doing the fillet for the launch lug. This is just a regular grocery bag. I use that to mask off the part of the rocket that I don't want to get my paint or primer on. We're going to use painter's tape to tape the grocery bag around the rocket pieces that will not be painted. And I also cover the hole on the launch lug as well as the launch lug. I don't want paint inside there because the paint will actually become a problem, uh, friction when it's trying to release from the launching pad on the pole. So that hole needs to stay clear. You also have a wooden stick in your kit that you can use to insert in the motor mount and hold on to the stick when painting so that you don't get paint on your hands. The primer is what's going on now. And you notice that you keep the spray in a moving uh, fashion. Spray and move, spray and move. You don't want to stand in one spot and spray because the buildup uh, will cause bubbles and, and drips and you end up having to sand it off. So it's spray and move, spray and move, spray and move. You want to do the priming and painting in coats, uh, thin layers at a time, and you just keep doing layers until you get the finish that you need. You may need to sand in between if you do have drips or um, the grain of the balsa starts to bubble up. You would want to smooth uh, that out once that, that coat dries before you add the next coat. And after the primer is on and dry, you can then begin the decorating, the painting, the stickers, whatever it is that you're choosing to put on your rocket noting that uh, the more you put on it, that may affect its performance. And we'll talk a little bit about that during our sessions. Add Astra, the kiss to the stars, and we'll see you in class.